Hi there, today we're going to be discussing all about food and depression. So if you're wondering, can changing your diet, putting different foods into your diet, can that actually help resolve depression and improve your mood, then you'll want to watch this video. Also if you're asking what are the types of foods that you should be eating on a daily and weekly basis, I'll answer that question in the second half of the video too. This is all based on scientific research. My name is Dr Janelle Sinclair if you haven't met me before. I'm a biochemist and a natural medicine practitioner and on this YouTube channel we talk about natural strategies for depression and anxiety. So what I wanted to discuss today is a scientific study that looks at the question whether changing your diet can actually resolve or decrease depression in people that have been clinically diagnosed with depression. Okay, so this trial is called the SMILES trial and the reference that you can look up is Jacka et al. 2017. And I'll put the link to the full length study in the description below. Okay, so the aim of the study was to see whether an increase in diet quality could resolve depression in those that have been clinically um, diagnosed. So what they wanted is for clients, participants, to increase the intake of veggies, of fruit, whole grains, oily fish, olive oil, legumes and raw nuts. They also included moderate levels of um, dairy and red meat as well. And they also wanted them to dec decrease high calorie nutrient poor foods. So we'll talk about this a bit more later, but that's just your sugary processed foods, your baking, your fri fried foods, that type of thing. Okay, so this study was a 12 week study and it's called a randomized controlled trial. So either participants, participants were um, randomly um, put into the group which they were recommended to do dietary changes um, and that's the treatment group and they had seven sessions with a dietitian that discussed the changes that they should be making in their diet. So they weren't force fed, uh, we couldn't control what they were eating but the, their education was controlled and they were motivated and encouraged to change their diet. In the control group they were put into a social support situation in which they did had seven sessions during this 12 week period as well. So I wanted to just um, talk briefly about the, the participants in the study just to show you that um, changing your diet can be helpful for people that are on antidepressants or not um, or doing psychotherapy or not. So the participant number was only 55 so it's not a huge study at all but it's the first of its kind um, and the woman had moderate to severe depression I'll say same woman, sorry, about 80% of the participants were women, but there were men in the study too. Um, 21 out of the 55 were doing psychotherapy as well as antidepressant medication, um, and they still had moderate to severe depression even though they were, they were taking both of those, doing both of those things. Um, nine pe um, people of the participants were um, doing psychotherapy and 25 were just taking antidepressant medication. So if you're on antidepressant medication or doing some counselling or working with a psychologist, this approach can work for you too. Okay, so now let's look at the results because this is what I think is exciting. So firstly we look at remission rates and that means um, that they had depression at the start of the study and at the end of the study they didn't. Okay, And so in the diet group, the people that changed their diet, 32% of participants actually had no depression um, by the end of the study in 12 weeks. Amazing eh? For moderate to, least, moderate to severe depression it's pretty significant. Whereas in the control group, the ones that were just doing social support, 8% of them were, um, went into remission during that time as well. Okay, so this is a significant difference between the two groups, showing that changing the diet does work. Okay. Next they looked at depressive scores um, and they used the MADA scores which is a Montgomery Asperger um, depression rating score. So 
at the beginning of the study, those that were in the dietary group, their average MEDA score was 26. So anything above 18 is um, a moderate depression. Okay? Um, anything less than 10 is having no depression at all. Okay, and so at the beginning of the study, they had 20, the, the measure of their depression and their severity was 26, whereas um, at the end of the study it was 14.8. So 14.8 is mild depression. So on average, um, everyone went from moderately severe depression to, to um, mild depression, but 30% um, went below that 10 mark. Okay, so control group. Um, this depressive scores were 24.7 in the beginning and 20.5 at the end of the study. So there was some improvement there, um, but these two numbers here are so significant. There are about seven difference, and there's a difference there, so it is significant. Um, and these are independent of weight loss, of physical activity and smoking as well, those changes. Finally, just want to show you that um, the people in, that participated, they did change their diet. Um, so they were counselled with the dietitian and encouraged to change their diet. But as I said, they weren't force fed, so you can't control that. Um, but they just did track what they were eating. And at the beginning of the study, their um, modified Mediterranean diet scale um, was 36. And at the end of the study, it was 55. It's far from perfect because the total amount that they could have earned was 120. So these changes weren't huge, they weren't um, radical, but they were enough to impact depression. And 93% um, of those that started the study completed it. And I think this is quite significant too because people think, oh, if you have depression, you can have a lot of fatigue and mo low motivation. So can people that are clinically depressed, can they actually change their diet? And the answer is yes. And I believe that you can change your diet too. There only need to be small changes and deliberate changes. And so let's have a look at um, what changes were recommended in this scientific study now. So how do you like my whiteboard? I thought that I'd just do something a little bit different today. Maybe you could comment in the, section, the comment section below about whether you like it, whether you want me to do it again or not. Great. So let's move on and discuss what dietary changes were recommended in this scientific study. So, this is the, the food sort of triangle, and in the bottom half are, are foods that they're recommending that you eat on a daily basis, all these down here. On the ones in the top is what they want you to consume on a weekly basis, so keep that in mind when I'm talking about serving servings per day. So firstly, they're suggesting whole grains, um, five to eight serves per day. Okay, this is based on your um, physical body size and also how much physical exercise that you're doing. So five serves for people that are smaller in body weight and eight for those that are larger in body weight. Okay, and also keep in mind that the serving sizes are quite small. So um, half a cup of oats or muesli is one serving size. And one slice of bread is one serving size, two wheat bix, and half a cup of rice or quinoa. So there's a few suggestions on what you can um, add into your diet. Okay, moving on, the second recommendation, and I think it's even more important than the whole grains personally, is improving your fruit and vegetable intake. And what they're recommending is three serves of fruit a day and six serves of um, vegetables per day, okay? So with the vegetables, they're recommending, so one serve is one cup of leafy vegetables and half a cup of cooked veggies and a small potato or a small um, sweet potato or, or um, yeah, about 60, 70 grams of pumpkin would be one serve as well. Okay, the good thing about fruit and veggies, it's going to increase your, um, the antioxidants in your body, it's going to increase the fibre, it's going to be really good for the bowels, um, feed the good healthy bugs um, in, your, in your tummy, and um, also it's going to help lower inflammation in the brain. 
Okay, so they've also recommended dairy products um, and they're suggesting low fat, unsweetened. I definitely recommend the unsweetened dairy if you choose to have dairy. And they're recommending two to three serves per day. So one cup of milk is one serve and 200 grams of yogurt is one serve. They're also suggesting olive oil, so three tablespoons of olive oil a day, and you could use that as a salad dressing. Okay, I um, usually suggest having a salad at lunchtime, and you can use the olive oil as a as a dressing on that. You could use put some nuts in your salad as well, or um, or seeds, um, and you can use the nuts and seeds for a snack during the day too. And they're recommending raw nuts um, and having one serve of those per day. Okay, so let's move on to the foods that you should incorporate on a weekly basis. Okay, firstly they're suggesting legumes if you tolerate them. So it's three to four serves per week and they're suggesting half a cup of chickpeas, lentils, baked beans or 75 grams of, of hummus, that, that's equivalent to the one serving. Okay. Next they're suggesting lean red meat, okay? so this could be 65 to 100 grams of pork or beef and they're suggesting three to four serves a day. What I notice with a lot of my clients is that they're erring away from eating red meat. And I understand, um, I understand the mentality of that, but the problem is that most of us aren't getting the iron and vitamin B12 um, daily recommended doses that we actually need. So um, I think this is a really good um, suggestion. Um, also including fish in, in your daily, um, in your weekly diet and 100 grams is the serving size and they're suggesting at least two serves um, per week of oily fish. So this can include salmon, um, sardines and anchovies. Um, they recommended tuna and tuna's okay in small portions so no more than one serving um, a day. Okay because the reason I say that is because it's a large fish and it accumulates heavy metals. So nextly they're suggesting poultry, so chicken um, and turkey, um, duck, two to three serves per day, eggs up to six a day, and then up the top the extras, and what, oh sorry, that's six not per day, per week, yeah. Um, and finally, right at the top is the extras. So have less than three of these extras per week. I know this might be difficult to begin with, but my suggestion is always to look at what you can add into your diet first. And if you're adding good stuff in your diet, you're more likely not to eat all the little extras that you shouldn't be. So these extras are the sweets, the cereal, the chips, the fried food, processed meat, um, sugary drinks, fast food, um, and alcohol, um, except red wine. So within this diet, because it's a modified Mediterranean diet, they've allowed um, two um, servings of red wine a day, which is one serving's 100 ml, so it's not a lot, so don't overdo it, okay? After watching this video, I want to ask you, what changes are you going to make in your diet this week? Maybe just focus on one thing that you know that you can do. It could be simple as having more red meat, the lean red meat. It could be as simple as adding some more fish into your diet. I know that a lot of people don't eat it because um, it's more expensive, but I highly recommend eating fish every single week. So that could be as simple as um, a salmon fillet or smoked salmon, or maybe um, some canned salmon or tuna once a week. Another thing that you might want to focus in on is your veggies and your, your fruit content as well. So maybe just add an, a piece of fruit for afternoon tea, or maybe um, some, some vegetables at afternoon tea, so like cucumber and carrots and tomatoes with um, hummus perhaps or pesto. Another thing you might want to consider is a smoothie for breakfast. You could put a cup of, half a cup of blueberries in it as well as a cup of spinach in it. And that's a good way to just to, to increase your veggie and fruit content during your day. 
So maybe you can tell me what you're going to plan, you're going to do. Maybe you can just write that in the comment section below and share it with other people and maybe a little bit of accountability. Last week I did a video on caffeine and coffee and anxiety. Now that's another dietary change that you should, you could make, and I say should actually, should make if you have um, anxiety, especially and maybe depression. So check that video out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that bell button and the subscription. And I'll see you in the next video.